my great pleasure and honor to uh, introduce the panel today. Uh, this co-creator of uh, Fringe, J.J. Abrams. Uh, our next co-creator, uh, Ro Roberto Orsi, uh, has, uh, with his partner, Alex Kurtzman, <laughs> I'm so glad they came together because they do so much together. Uh, they've written Transformers, the third uh, uh, Mission Impossible movie. Uh, they, they wrote for a couple of my favorite shows, Hercules, Xena Warrior, Princess, and you cannot go wrong with any show starring Bruce Campbell, Jack of All Trades. As I said, Roberto Orsi and Alex Kurtzman. Uh, our next executive producer is showrunner, you met him before, Jeff Pinkner. Thank you. Next we have uh, executive producer. Uh, I'm told he is uh, a main bad robot man. Uh, he, he'll correct me if I'm wrong. As I under, understand it, he's in charge of a lot of uh, post-production and editing for Fringe. Uh, Brian Burke. Um, now we have one of the stars of the show. Um, Anna Torp was uh, born in Australia, uh, an actress of enormous range, as you've seen. Uh, we've also seen her in uh, Mistresses that, uh, that's been shown here on BBC America. Anna Torp, thank you. Uh, our next... Uh, Guest uh, Joshua Jackson is best known for the seasons he spent on the WB network portraying the. <laughs> he's, a, he's a man who does waits for no introduction. <clears throat> He stepped on my joke. I was going to say he spent many years on the WB network playing the sensitive, funny, intelligent young college student, Felicity Porter. <laughs> but uh, then never mind. Uh, uh, and um, finally, last but certainly not least, uh, you know him from The Lord of the Rings. On 24, day six, he was the Russian consul Markov. Uh, you know him best now as Dr. Walter coffee cake, tiny pebbles of cinnamon sugar, <laughs> Bishop John Noble. I'm a, I'm a critic, so I'm gonna have a lot of opinions that I'll toss out. You can tell me if I'm <laughs> completely wrong or not, in addition to questions. And I'll probably try to ask uh, questions to you specifically, to some of you specifically, but, I, but please feel free to jump in at any point to disagree, add, uh, agree. Um, we can do that. Great. Um, I'd like to know right off the bat, uh, what was the initial, I, I guess I would direct this to the, the, the two, two men who co-created the show primarily. Um, what was the initial conception of the show, and how did it change? Well, we started at heart to heart. <laughs> Literally, we sat down in Jada's office, the three of us, and said, let's come up with a television show, and literally kind of had like a television workshop, and just said, what kind of shows did you love? I love this, and what kind of movies did you love? And so we went back and forth between kind of a mad scientist show and heart to heart. <laughs> It's, right? It's true. Heart to Heart kind of went by the wayside. <laughs> we thought, what about billionaires on a jet instead of a mad scientist? And then we went. I think that the, the first of all, if I can just say, thank you for coming. This is awesome. 
And, uh, and also, uh, thank you, Mr. Tucker, for being here. This is uh, an honor to have you doing this. Thanks. So um, much. And uh, I won't disagree with anything you say tonight because <laughs> I'm too scared to. Um, uh, but no, but I, I think that the, you know, what Bob said is right. We just got together and we're talking about the shows and the movies that we loved. <clears throat> Uh, either growing up or just in our lives, and you know David Cronenberg type stories, and and you know the the altered states that Patty Chayefsky, uh script, and the the obviously Twilight Zone, obviously X Files, Fly. Night Stalker, yeah, the, yeah, just all these things that we loved. And we thought doing a show that kind of lived in that world was very appealing to us, and we just developed it from there. And we asked, we just it was like what what is not on television right now that we'd want to see. And the answer was a genre show rooted in character. And that was a big part of what birth Fringe. And, and who came up with the name Massive Dynamic, one of the great, great company names of all time? That was you. <laughs> I think that was JJ. I, I think we literally had lists of names, and we were just emailing them back and forth. Uh, and some. And we had all the regular company names, General Dynamics. You know, General Electric, this and that, and I think you put those two. Yeah, yeah it was just we we, we had a, a huge list of names, yeah. and uh, that was the one we came up with. And we're actually we we're going to do Mass Dynamics, but it was taken. It's the taken. Dot, dot com, Mass Dynamics dot com was taken. Oh. So I'm like, well, Mass Dynamic. Right. Really. It's so available. <laughs> <laughs> and if that hadn't worked, Mass Dynamic. That's right. <laughs> that mucked us up for a while. Just so you know. <laughs> Is it hard to remember? Yeah, because you'd always say the wrong thing. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't it registered it like the day before? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's some weird thing where like we looked on and like like it had literally been registered the day before or something. We were we were like what? <laughs> <laughs> what are the odds that Mass Dynamics was registered? <laughs> and then it I saw was me. It was you did. It. Yeah. <laughs> Just trying to make a little money on the side. I thought you guys would pay for it. <laughs> Very Peter of you. 